And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Tammy Billups, international healing practitioner, educator, and pioneer on the animal-human sacred soul partnership. She is the author of the books Animal Way Showers, Animal Soul Contracts, and Soul Healing with Our Animal Companions. Tammy, thank you for joining me today and welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Tammy, how did you start working with animals in the first place? Well, it was really by chance. It's, it's, it's an interesting story in that, you know, I had been through one of those, one of those years, as we say, you know, those years where there were four losses and memories that resurfaced from childhood that I had repressed. And one of those awful years that, that led me in a new direction. And, and through that process, I knew all of a sudden I had these, these gifts of seeing and experiencing energy that I didn't before. And I knew that I wanted to help people heal in the manner that I had found a practitioner that helped me heal through energy and got off of eight medications that I thought I'd be on forever. And so I started working with people and through the four year certification around learning about people's emotional wounds, how to identify it in their energy field, how to get to the core of it. I thought, I wonder if this works on animals, animals that always been ah, my saviors. I let them in, not many others, just let my animals in. So obviously I got pretty emotionally close to them, still am. And, uh, and so I started asking my friends, you know, can I try this stuff on your animals and just see if it works? And and they had these pretty miraculous results. And I thought, this is pretty crazy. And what was what was interesting to me and, and still fascinates me still to this day is that when I would work on my friend's animal and I could see in their energy field where they had a protection pattern, energetic pattern, let's say example around abandonment, if I tuned into their person's energy at all, 100% of the time, their person had the same exact wound. And I just found that fascinating. And I thought, what are the odds that every single time if the animal has invasiveness, the person has invasiveness. So they mirror us. And that's where really things kind of took off because I was really fascinated by that, of helping people and animals realize why they came together and to help them heal similar wounds, mirroring wounds at the same time. So there was, there was a year or two, uh, and I still have actually, I think more two legged clients than four legged, <laughs> you know, because sometimes they'll come for their animals first and then it circles back as they realize, you know, the animal's good now let's work on me. That, that always turns on the animals. So it's kind of like the chicken versus the egg, which came first. Is it always the problem starts with the human and then finds its way to the animal? Not always, uh, but certainly they're always mirroring, regardless of how long the animal's with you, even if you're fostering, you know, uh, because sometimes these animals come in with their wounds, pretty heavy wounds. I mean, I do a lot of donating to rescue centers and I mean, they've got some pretty horrific stories of it's, it's. I mean, animals are so brave to even think of, of being around people, quite frankly, you know, when you when you hear some of these stories. But some a lot of times, you know, it can be where the animal is bringing forth the wound, but they're always going to attract a person that has a similar wound. That's, you know, it's just it's just magnetic. So the title of your newest book is Animal Way Showers. How did you come up with that title and what is a way shower? A way shower is a term that I first heard maybe 22 years or so ago. Um, one of my spiritual mentors would use it frequently for people that were showing others the way, uh, you know, that maybe were taking on responsibility of unearthing, a, you know, a new way of being. And, and I love the word. And I, it, it really means it's, it, a way shower is like a light worker on speed. <laughs> you know, let's just say that, you know, they're, they are somewhat detached in nature. 
they are holding this vibrational transformational healing presence for all those around them. They don't necessarily have to be hands on, but a way shower is just showing up and maintaining a higher vibration. And usually at a soul level, they are, um, they have made a very conscious intention to serve others, to serve others and light workers as well, of course. Uh, but I think way showers are maybe more impactful in some ways in that they have a bigger reach and, and they've been around the block, you know, a few more times. It doesn't mean that they're better. Absolutely not. Every soul is where they are on their journey, but we're always learning from those that have been, you know, have more mileage on them. And way showers are literally those beings that are showing us the way, usually through uh, modeling a way of being. And those are the gurus and the people who we think I want to be like them when I grow up. You know, those are usually the people and animals that are holding a higher vibration. And we're drawn to that, drawn to that easier way of being because they look like they're having an easier go of things. And they're helping others just by being who they are and sometimes intentionally you know, showing up and serving others in greater masses, not all the time though, but a lot of times they are. And I, as I, I've worked with animals and their people for many decades now, and I just kept running into more and more of these animals and hearing these stories of, of exceptional work that they're doing. And there are a few animals in particular that I started working with that I felt wow, they're really nudging me at a soul level to tell their story. And the book is not filled with just only animal stories, it has a lot of knowledge. Hopefully that will help others. But, uh, but I just felt like they were really writing this book through me. Uh, these, these evolved masters that want to show humanity what the animal kingdom is doing for them, at a, what their mission is, how they're serving us. Do you think that we reincarnate as animals or do you think these animal beings are completely different? Oh, I think, I think we have free will to do whatever we want, you know, especially from the other side that we can have any type of experience uh, in an animal or not. You know, I, I have, I've gained a lot of, you know, insights and beliefs based on what I've seen during sessions over the past couple of decades. And, and certainly there are ascended masters that maybe are, might be one of our soul group or a spirit guide, and they might go into an animal body. And we'll know that too, you know, especially if you have that feeling with certain animals where you feel like you've known and loved them for a very long time. And that's that intimacy that comes with, with experience, uh, a relationship with the soul that we do know from the other side. And we probably have incarnated with them many times before. And animals can do that. The subtitle of your book is The Light Workers Ushering Us into 5D Consciousness. Ushering in 5D Consciousness. Okay. Yes. What is your definition of 5D Consciousness? Mm. Well, really 5D Consciousness is holding a frequency and a vibration that allows us to reveal our truest self. Our truest self. The self that knows that we'll be fine no matter what, that our needs are always taken care of, that's forgiving and accepting and not judging and uh, feeling peaceful and grounded and connected to all there is. And we all have those moments every single, well, I don't know if everybody has one every single day, but we blip in and out of these frequencies of 3D, 4D, 5D, maybe even 6D while we're in bodies. So 5D consciousness is an easier way of living where there's no suffering if we're holding a frequency of 5d all the time there's no suffering in 5d when we're suffering that's when we know we've dropped our vibration of course and we're human so of course we're going to have those those moments but the animals i believe can hold the higher frequency with uh, more often Right. They're they're living more in that. It's easier for them to stay connected, take care of their needs, be in the present moment, uh, meditate. You know, they are so connected in that way. Do you ever write about the higher self? The higher self. Well, it's a term that's used many, many times in 
in the book, of course, and uh, use it as our soul, you know, our higher self. Yeah. I kind of feel like our higher self is our complete self. And when we're there, we basically know everything and we can tune into everything. And when we come here, we're limited by our physical body. So we're kind of like our limited self. What I'm getting to is, do you think it's possible that animals could even be more evolved than us and they're taking these even more limited bodies during their experience? Yes, (laughs) absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you look at how animals show up for humanity and they hold this vibrational presence, they can walk in a room and they know exactly who needs to lighten up, who needs uh, maybe a button that needs to push because they have some anger they haven't released. Or, I mean, they show up for us in these profound ways that we don't even recognize in the moment. So yes, you know, I think they're really maintaining this 5D consciousness more frequently and showing up for us in that manner. How would you say that animals are ushering 5D consciousness? Well, some of the things they're doing is, is, you know, I look at them as they're, they're the ambassadors of love, right? I mean, they really are. I mean, they are the ambassadors of love. They're on the front lines, domesticated animals, which is mainly what I talk about in the book. Domesticated animals are on the front lines of the animal kingdom's mission to raise the vibration and show humanity an easier way of living, an easier way of being. So they show up, they mirror us, like I mentioned earlier, they're going to show us about ourselves, you know, in any given moment, some a behavior or a physical issue that your animal companion has is showing you something about you. And what you'll find is that when you consciously embark upon this higher consciousness journey with your animal, then as soon as you recognize what the message is and you pull back your energy from trying to fix whatever they're doing or or running you know be on crazy fix it island and get the next herb for them all of a sudden you'll see something they're showing you about yourself and their behavior or issue can change on a dime oh she got it oh he got it and all of a sudden the behavior stops it's really incredible so they're always always showing us the way to our heart and the way to get to an easier way of being and living. It's waking up to what their messages are and starting to be able to identify a more conscious relationship with your animal companions. It can be life-changing because usually the people that get really emotionally close to their animals, and I'm one of those people for sure, that means that you're on a more, you know, you're, you're going to be on a healing journey where you're going to be healing together. And you'll find that they heal a lot faster than you when you partner with them. They say, oh, they got it now. I'm good. And I found that early when I started working with, with animals is that they would immediately feel better. But if their person wasn't on the journey with them to heal that same wound, a lot of times they'd revert. And then the person would call and say, hey, you know, they were so good for so long. And then that's when I started, you know, working with both together because that's when the, the results helped. When you say that animals mirror us, are you saying that they are showing us who we are? Or do you think it's more that they're absorbing all of our negative energy? Yeah. Um, they can absorb certainly our emotional energy. Yes. That, and that is going to be one of the ways that they mirror us. Um, because when you, when you take the reins of your own inner healing journey, it's going to benefit them, uh, tremendously, but there are, there are other ways that can mirror us. And, um, you know, it's not only the emotional wounds. Sometimes we project on our animals, you know, our unhealed wounds, you know, if, if our parents never heard us and didn't listen to us. You can bet, you know, when I get a call from a person, they'll say, well, they never listened to me. They never, you know, my animal never listens to me. There's a, there's that can be that projection, uh, that's, uh, that can happen. There, there are many different types of soul contracts that we have with our animals to help us grow and evolve and change and, 
be able to hold more light. Since you mentioned soul contracts with our animals, are you suggesting that we plan out these contracts pre-birth? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. We know the possibilities of exact, I believe, based on what I've seen, that we know exactly the, the souls that, that we're going to be drawn to work together with, to, to grow together and transform together. Yeah, absolutely. We, we arrange these things. And obviously, we're in a body, there's free will, and, and there can be changes along the way. But most of the time, we have a little spiritual helper, so of course, to help us keep on track. And we'll be drawn to the animals that we intended to sign up with. And, and I found that we will repeatedly incarnate with the same animal souls uh, for our growth, because it's easier to recognize who they are. We partner together. We know we love each other well. And we do that with people too. One thing that's fascinating is that evolutionary speaking, since the humans became basically the dominant animal on the planet, but domesticated animals have also really benefited from that, especially dogs and cats. Yes. Yeah, they have. And so are you, in what way do you see them as benefiting? I mean, just on a survival level, since dogs are domesticated and are living with humans, as well as cats, they're more likely to survive than being just out in the wild uh -huh. roaming in packs. Ah, I see. I see what you're saying. Gotcha. Because I, I guess my mind went to, uh, I, I just unfortunately see so much animal abuse mm -hmm. in, in my realm and I get to hear about that. And yes, yeah. I mean, I think that... You know, I mean, there are those that believe that cats and dogs arrived, you know, back in the times of Atlantis and uh, and that every child that was born was assigned a dog to protect them and, and teach them love. And cats were uh, given to homes to help clear the energy in the home. I mean, there's all kinds of lore and out there about their origins, but they have certainly helped humans humanity evolve for millions of years. A lot on the show, we talk about why do we even come here in the first place? And a lot of guests will say this is an earth school and we're here to, you know, suffer or, or to evolve and to learn. Why would animals want to do that as well? There would have to be some that would be part of what you just said for that description. But I think more there would be the souls that said, let us help these, <laughs> let us go down and serve. This is the way that we can serve this planet and help to raise its vibration. That's really what the book is about. It's about how they're showing up for us uh, to, to show us a new way and help this planet to evolve to a 5D way of living again. Do you believe that animals can see spirits when we can't? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And once I began seeing energy, all of a sudden I was seeing now what my, what my animals were, were seeing. I mean, oh yeah, got it. You know, so absolutely because they're more connected and they live more from, you know, from that side of the brain, that's much more intuitive. They don't lose that. Some, some animals are, are more intuitive than others, just like people. Some are going to be seeing into other dimensions a little more easily and they'll let you know. Absolutely. And I, I get some of those calls. I'll get a call that says, my, my dog just goes in the corner and stares up at the ceiling all the time. What is he seeing? You know, and he won't, he, he just barks, you know. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of those types of calls too. It's, it's really interesting and fascinating, but absolutely they are overall, they're seeing into these other dimensions. Sometimes on the show, we talk about that we're here for a purpose. Do you think animals have their own purpose or mission? And if so, how can we help them fulfill that? Uh, yes. Yeah. They, they, you know, you, I believe that we can have a life where we can choose to incarnate and flip around and have fun little experiences if we want. But overall, there's a mission and purpose to animals showing up for us. And, um, and what was your second part of your question? How can we help them fulfill their purpose? I knew there was something important. So I love this question. We can, we can help animals fulfill their mission by honoring them and looking in the mirror 
and seeing what they see, number one, you know, if whatever your aunt, when your animal looks at you and says, I love you unconditionally, you are so beautiful, all these things that we get from our animals, they want you to see that within yourself. And they want you to, to learn how to look under the hood, do your own work, you know, believe that you're worth it, that you're deserving of a new way of living so that you can then do what they're doing and serve others through your healing process. So trying to, you know, I, I the whole third part of the book is donated to the, is, is, is about this subject, you know, about what can you do to honor their mission? And I list out a lot of different uh, 5D healing modalities and really going down that road to, to embrace a, better way of being to what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you're eating, everything about yourself so that you can maintain a higher vibration because that is when you're able to help the world and help all of those around you. And that's what animals are trying to do. So you can honor them by emulating them. How's that? If you talk to animal trainers, they'll tell you that, you know, animals run in packs and you have to kind of always let the animal, especially a dog, know that you're the leader of the pack. So they'll say you don't want to let the dog sleep on the bed with you or things like that. What is your opinion on that? My opinion is that whatever that person is moving through in their house with their animal is right for them in that moment. You know, um, our animals are our partners. So again, everybody's going to have their different preferences for how they choose to coexist in their house with their animal. And I believe those things are predestined as well, as well as how they pass. Some people who believe that you shouldn't assist them when they're passing and some that are adamant that, uh, that you do. And I believe that our souls line those things up in advance of things that we want to work through. So did the dog know that they would incarnate and probably never get on the bed? Maybe, you know, and maybe it's not a big deal for the animal. To say, okay, you know, um, everyone's going to have different training methods. And hopefully the animal, I promise you, the animal is trying to raise the consciousness of the person. And a lot of times they do. I don't know how many times I've met that person who said, I would never let my animal sleep on the bed. And then they're like carrying them around and in a little, you know, the animal got through, right? Yeah. So that happens. I don't know what's going on in Atlanta, but here, after the pandemic started, people were taking their dogs with them everywhere. Do you think that animals have special abilities that help us through pandemics and other disasters? Wasn't that wonderful for what happened during the pandemic? I mean, one of the greatest gifts I see is that, you know, the shelters were empty. I mean, all the animals were getting adopted. They were foster failures nationwide. And the animals definitely stepped up their game. I mean, 2020 was a very busy year for me. And when I would work with animals and their people, I would see that animals had an even heightened level of service. That was, it was like they were just showing up with more armor, with more gifts to help their people through this time. Because people, you know, in the beginning, people couldn't hug those, you know, they couldn't leave the house and they were missing that intimacy of being with their family and friends. And every time I know for me, I'd say, oh, I miss hugging so-and-so. One of my cats would jump on my lap instantly out of nowhere. I'm here, mom, hug me. I'm here for you. And they knew what was happening. They knew. And I, I was just blown away time and time again when I would work with the animals that year to see how, how collectively they, it was as if they joined forces and said, da, 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 they need us now. And they can come in and open our hearts in ways that, that people maybe couldn't. A lot, of, a lot of healing happened that year for people who went deeper into their wounds, especially in grief, because that's held at the lungs. And, and at that time, you know, COVID was, you know, it was all about the, it's all about the lungs. People were, you know, weren't able to breathe through it. And I, when I would connect to animals, there would be all this excess energy at their lungs that they had picked up from their person because people were being moved into moving out their grief. 
because the people who hadn't moved out the grief were more likely to catch it in my mind. Hmm. An opportunity to move out whatever we were holding in our lungs. When I was in college, my roommate brought home a cat. I had never had a cat in my family or in my life before, and this cat took a liking to me. But when I had to go home on weekends or when there was be like a break between semesters, it was like the cat knew I was leaving for a few days or a week. It would just do this strange thing of just like running around the, the apartment like crazy. Do you know of any other kind of psychic abilities animals would have like that? Oh, they, they always, always are in tune because they're living more in 5D. So they're always getting our visuals. That's how they know when we're going to be drive, you know, pulling up in the drive, that's how they know you're going to leave on a trip because you're already in your mind, you're visualizing where you're going and what you're doing. And they pick up on your energy. There's no doubt about it. So anything that you're thinking about, you want to make sure, especially if it's a behavior that they're exuding that you don't want, you want to focus on the behavior that you do want them to have, or they're going to keep doing the negative behavior because that's what you're showing them. It's really interesting. So they that's probably the thing that I would guide most people to tune into regarding their psychic abilities is knowing that your animals are always, always reading your mind and getting the visuals that you're focusing on in your mind. But they, they, they know, I mean, they, you think of the animals that know diseases in advance, right? Did they mm -hmm. use, and these are way showers that are working hospitals and, and nurturing others and, and, high vibrational ways, they, they are in tune with the energy of what's happening within us. So are you saying that animals are already living in 5D? Certainly more than humans are, yes. I mean, depending on their experiences. Again, I've seen a lot of, a lot of animals that aren't in 5D because of the, the abuse they're suffering. But yes, they are ushering in 5D mm, consciousness wow. because they are able to maintain being in that place of total acceptance, they don't, they aren't choosing sides. They're reading a person's energy. That's what we all should be doing. It's just, do I like this person's energy? And how do I raise my vibration so I can call in more like beings? And animals are holding that for us. It's really extraordinary. How long do you think they've been in 5D? Oh, that's a good question. I have no idea. I can't imagine them not having been in the 5D. If I look back at, you know, you read stories or you hear of things from, I mean, horses moved us from a nomadic. I mean, they, you know, if you look at what animals have done for us, um, for humanity, I think they've probably always been able to nurture and maintain their connection, which is a big part of maintaining 5D consciousness. A lot of times we talk about the ascension on here and we're talking about that we're moving into 5D. When do you think we're going to make it? Oh, I, oh, I wish I had that, that beautiful crystal ball, but I don't. All we can do is, is focus on ourselves living more and reaching for that on a more consistent basis. Wouldn't it be nice if... If we were there, you know, in a few hundred years, I mean, what do you think on that? I don't know. I have so many different opinions that some people will even say we've, we've already started, if you can put it that soon. And some people think within the next 10 years. Wow. That would be wonderful if it was in the next 10 years. That seems like a long shot to me. Boy, that'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. More people that are aware of it, though, that do their part, the faster we're going to get there. And animals are certainly doing their part. In your book, Way Showers, you write about transformational healing presence. Can you tell us more about that? Yes. Transformational healing presence is a way of holding this 5D consciousness for all those in your wake. And animals are certainly gifted with doing this. A lot of horses in particular, but, but all species, of course. It's, it's a vibration of, of holding space for all those around them. And we all know those animals that can walk in a room and we immediately feel better. It's like, oh, look at so-and-so, you know, and they're coming over and we just think they're the friendliest dog in the world. But what if they're intentionally holding 
a vibration because they know we need to be lifted up. They know we need to feel better. And how often do we meet an animal and we do feel better after having touched them for a moment? Those that are the animals that are holding transformational healing presence are usually more detached in their uh, expectation of your being lifted or not. They're just holding the space and you feel better. I know I talk about in, as an example in the book, uh, this horse named magic and magic was on, uh, was it, he actually passed just a couple months ago, but he would hold this presence for people for hope who had this land and she would do these, these lovely circles of women would come and healing and shamanic circles and, and magic would always want to be in the center and just hold this presence for all. And his approach would change with each person, depending on their needs, depending on their wounds. And, and hope would watch this change within magic for everyone that he met. But most people would always walk away with either tears or laughter, or I feel better for having known him because he has such a strong vibrational presence. And that's what I call transformational healing presence, the ability to hold that vibration for others without having an attachment, just, just having the ability to change others through being who you are and an intention to be healing force, be a healing force for all those in your wake. Do you think we need animals more than they need us? Yes. <laughs> Do you think that they know that? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> they would definitely know that. Those I'm sure many times those people <laughs> if they would just wake up uh yeah, they know that. And they're, they're okay with that, but there's not as much ego with them. They're, they're okay with holding that space for us while we, in our due time, work through our stuff to, to wake up to what, you know, they're showing us. Can you discuss sound therapy and how it helps animals? Oh, yeah. You know, it's interesting because I, um, I love healing with sound and Atlanta's got a big network of sound therapists and vibrational sound therapists. And so I've been privy to being a lot of sound journeys as they call them. And one of the places I donate sessions to good muse, they have a big, huge cat room, which all the adult cats lives, you know, together. And they do yoga classes in there, you know, and all kinds of different classes. And I recommended them that they allow sound journeys to be, uh, to be happening and recommended someone in particular. And he started doing, donating his time to do weekly sound journeys where people come in and bring a mat, but they're in this big cat room, right? Well, there's this one cat, Raglan. They didn't know until, you know, good muse, you know, until she was dropped off and the vet inspected her that she was deaf. Hmm. And Raglan didn't lay out the welcome mat to people, especially being amongst all these other cats. And there's lots of cat trees, of course, and people would try to pet her. And you knew she didn't want to be petted. She uh, didn't get adopted, of course. And Michael would come in. I get, I just got chills even about with him when I'm about to say he would come in and set up his, you know, all of his singing bowls and flutes and all the tools that he uses to do sound journeys. And there was one time where he started playing the flute and Raglan was on a cat tree behind him. And as soon as he played, she all of a sudden moved to his shoulder and sat down and became this loving, beautiful cat, warm cat. And she leaned down into the flute, just drawn to the vibrations of the flute. And Michael tears up when he talks about it because they had a little energy transference where he could feel her gratitude. And every time he would show up, Raglan for everyone in the room became this loving, wonderful cat because of the healing vibrations of sound. Well, 
gosh, if animals can intuitively respond so positively to sound journeys, I mean, can't people as well? So they are absolutely drawn to these sound journeys and they can change the vibration for the people and the animals that are, that are, you know, listening to, to the singing bowls or whatever the music that it is that's coming through the, uh, the vibrational therapist. So it can be transformational. It's a beautiful way to get us to 5D. It's one of the, one of the many ways, tools that we have as humans to intentionally use. And I know I do. And when I, I've tuning forks and there's a couple tuning forks that as soon as I tap them, my cats come running in. Oh, we like those. And there's a couple that I use that they say, nope, not that one. They'll let you know. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty amazing. I can totally understand how they react to it because I recently saw a video where a guy was showing a high quality singing bowl versus a low quality one. But the way he was demonstrating it was by filling it with water. And the high quality one really made the water, you know, bubble up and, and splash and, and become excited. It was, it was pretty cool. Oh, that, yeah, there is a difference in, in the, uh, how they're made most certainly. And I think animals can probably detect that as well because they're holding a specific vibration. I don't know if, if you have any pets that do this, but sometimes when it's thunderstorming outside, pets will get, you know, nervous or scared and go hide under the bed. Do you have any tips for us that we can help our pets during times like that? Yeah. So you can, at first, if you know there's a storm coming, obviously you want to, you know, kind of guide them, you know, it might be a storm, make sure that you find your safe place and make sure they do have a safe place where they can feel good, you know? And I know they even, I know there's, there's some for, for dogs that they create these little rooms where the animal can go in and, and it, and it kind of cuts down on the frequency of the storms. But um, I would say the number one thing that people can do to help their animals is by calming their own energy around it. Because a lot of times we're thinking, oh no, Fluffy's going to be upset tonight. There's a storm. I got to find him. I got to run. You know, all of a sudden their vibration is down into fear of their animal suffering. And so you keeping your vibration up when it happens of saying, you're safe, you're good. We will get through this. You will be fine. Go to, here's your safe place. And maybe you do put on, put on some music, maybe some classical music or something that is a higher vibration during that time. And then just holding that space for yourself is going to help them more than you're worrying about them. Worry is one of those things where you're dropping your energy level and your vibration, I should say. And so holding that vibration is going to be really helpful for your animal. You'd already written two books about animals. What inspired you to write this third one? The animals. <laughs> the animals inspired me. This, this book, after, after I, if I'm being frank, after each book, I say I'm never writing another one <laughs> because it's, it's a lot of work. But this one came through, I feel, more from the animal kingdom. And I feel like this is my gift to them. Can you give us some examples of rituals and exercises to be able to embrace the 5D frequencies? Sure. You can obviously set up meditation practice. That one seems pretty obvious. I would say that another wonderful ritual is learning how to build your observer muscle. Hmm. And... I don't know if that's a ritual as much as a practice of being able to maintain that getting to that observer space of seeing things differently, staying out of that fear, you know, and just moving into that. Oh, look, I'm, you know, that reaction I just had to my mother or whatever. I was reacting from my emotional wounds. I have some work to do here versus I hate my mother or whatever it is. I'm just kind of getting to that higher space of looking at things. That's what animals would do. Animals are much more forgiving. They can see everyone's truest self. They have that gift that they show for, that they show to us. Um, let me see, what are some other rituals? Certainly any type of creativity, laughter. Um, there's um, hmm, what you eat. 
what you're listening to. That's, that's going to be a wonderful ritual, giving yourself permission to go outside in nature on a more regular basis, stay connected to all that there is, working with crystals, giving yourself permission to do these habits of self-love and believe that you're worthy of living in a higher vibration. So that means dealing with our emotional wounds because those are the things that sabotage us from saying, okay, yeah, I'm really not going to take that drink or I'm not going to you know, do this. It's really just enhancing our level of self-love. I'm glad that you mentioned eating, giving your pets table scraps, a good idea or not? <laughs> well, it depends on the scrap. <laughs> I mean, there are many, uh, many people that cook their animals food for them and mm. uh, just a healthy diet. And, and I'm probably one that believes that giving them uh, human grade food or a higher vibrational food is better for them. What are you most hopeful that the readers will take away from your book? I'm most hopeful that they will walk away saying, you know, with a new level of awareness on what their animals are doing for them, such that they are driven to honor their animal soul missions and take the reins of their own healing journey at a greater, deeper level than what they were before. And, and maybe embrace their own inner light, their own true self, their own inner way shower, such that they can show up and hold that transformational healing presence, like animals do, and serve others through holding a higher vibration. That's what I'm most hopeful for. Well, I'm glad you came today because you've inspired me to think about my animal in a completely different way, or at least the possibility of it. Oh, good. I'm so glad to hear that. If people want to reach out to you and ask you questions, are you up for that? Sure. What's the best way to reach you? Yeah, uh, TammyBillips.com is, is it's kind of a one-stop shop. That's where all my classes and the books and everything is, is, is noted there. So if they go to my website, TammyBillips.com, they're going to they're gonna find out everything I have to offer. And I welcome their questions. Are you working on anything right now that you want us to know about? Oh, the next project actually started before this book, and it's the companion product to this book. And it's, a, it's an oracle card deck. Uh, called Animal Way Showers as well, and, and depicting many of the Animal Way Showers that I have met along the journey from all over the world. Uh, the art's already completed for it, and hopefully it'll be out next year, but we will see. <laughs> Before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? Know that what your animal is saying to you is indeed factual, that you are lovable, that you matter that you are worthy of all good things and that you are capable of holding more light and sharing it. Tammy, thank you for that message and thank you for being my guest. No, oh, thank you for having me. This has been wonderful, Jeffrey. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.